In the current era of superhero media, one hero stands above the rest, the caped baldy, or as we all know and love him, One Punch Man. We'll check out the webcomic turned manga turned anime about Saitama, the average Joe who trained so hard his hair fell out. Hey guys, I'm Joey with Channel Frederator, and we've got all the tidbits you may not have noticed, along with stories about the adaptation struggles, like why everyone was afraid of drawing the bald and beautiful protagonist. So get your fist ready, cause we're counting down 107 facts about One Punch Man. Let's get started. <laughs> Fact number one. One Punch Man debuted as a webcomic back in 2009. It was created by an author under the pseudonym One, number two. One was born in Niigata and raised in Konos, Saitama, which could be where Saitama got his name. Number three. In episode seven of the anime, the scientists look at a map of the earth, which shows a huge continent shaped exactly the same as Japan's prefecture Saitama, whose capital is the city of Saitama. Number four. Prior to One Punch Man, one had written several manga, including Sun Man and Tennis Player Ryu. However, none of them were actually published. That's okay. It's a rough patch. Number five. One started up One Punch Man exclusively for his own entertainment, so he just makes the characters do whatever he's feeling. Number six. Early on, One uploaded all of his work by taking pictures of it with his phone. Only after a friend showed him the website Nitosha did he decide to invest in all the equipment necessary for web-based drawings. Number seven. According to One, the advantage of webcomics over traditional media is that it's easy to re-upload quick fixes, something that's sadly impossible with printed media. Number eight. By 2012, the series had reached almost eight million hits. Not bad for a decently draw an indie comic. Number 9. The One Punch Man webcomic went on hiatus in February 2010 because one got a real job at the time. In spring 2011, however, he quit his day job to make cartoons for a living. Hashtag living the dream. Number 10. As of now, there are 108 chapters of the OG One Punch Man webcomic and counting. Number 11. In 2012, manga artist Yusuke Murata reached out to One, seeking to adapt One Punch Man into a formal manga. The series was redrawn and distributed via Young Jump webcomics. Number 12. Murata first got into reading webcomics when I Shield 21 was coming to an end. He ended up checking out One Punch Man and pulled an all-nighter just to catch up with it. Pinge reading. It happens. Number 13. Murata was worried about picking up One Punch Man since he was under contract for Shonen Jump. However, after a terrible sickness, Murata decided that if he was going to spontaneously die, he wanted to spontaneously die working on One Punch Man. Pretty grim, but also an honor to the OPM. Murata is alive and okay, just so you know. Number 14. Murata was inspired to reach out to One after seeing his tweet that he was considering staying at his full-time job and abandoning art. Murata stepped in to stop him and gave him a full time job arting. See kids? To achieve your dreams, all you have to do is tweet about giving up and hope someone with power sees. Number 15. Looks are in everything. According to one, a hero's true coolness comes from their spirit, not their looks. Number 16. Simplicity was actually the goal of Saitama's design. One saw how many cool looking superheroes there are and decided to design one that didn't fit that mold. Number 17. The title of One Punch Man, as rendered in Karakana, One Pan Man, is a parody of the Japanese superhero, An Pan Man. His costume is also similar, but with inverted colors. Number 18. When Murata first began redesigning the characters, he almost made Saitama cool looking. Well, yeah, but he quickly realized that Saitama isn't meant to be a handsome dude, so he scrapped his designs and stayed more true to the character. Number 19. According to one, Saitama is bad at pretty much all team sports, but excels at running. So, track team? Number 20. In one episode, Saitama jumps from the moon to the earth in 1.5 seconds. That's almost the speed of light, and he wasn't even using his full power. Number 21. Because of his appearance, many people, both friends and foes of Saitama, think he's weak, but there are a few who know his true strength, including Genos, Kabuto Carnage, Sonic, Bang, Boros, King, Moomin Rider, and Fubuki. Number 22. Saitama usually arrives at a battle scene after all the other heroes have been conquered. It's always late to the party. Number 23. Saitama was unemployed when he met and fought Cribalante, and was later accepted into the Hero Association as a C-class hero, and later became a B-class hero. Ha <laughs> ha! Promotion. Number 24. Saitama used to live off of his savings, and was very careful with his spending. He would mostly survive off vegetables that were given to him by people he saved. First time veggies are a reward, and not a punishment. Number 25. Before Saitama was unemployed, he used to work at a convenience store. See? Everyone has those odd jobs. Number 26. The convenience store is revealed in a picture on one's old homepage, where a robber is holding a knife to Saitama, and Saitama is wondering where the barcode of the knife is because he thinks it's one of the merchandise. Boy, was he wrong. Number 27. Saitama watched a lot of superhero shows when he was a kid, and he always wanted to be one himself. He was inspired again after saving that kid from Krablante, and he spent the next three years working out and preparing to fight to protect people. Number 28. The kid that Saitama saved was the grandchild of Chinner, the rich man 
who then created the Hero Association that Saitama would later join. <laughs> what a small world. Number 29. One has another current manga series called Mob Psycho 100, which is distributed on Weekly Shonen Sunday. Mob Psycho 100 also received an anime adaptation, and we're not saying you should go watch it, but you should totally go watch it. Number 30. There are a lot of references between Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man. For instance, in the Mob Psycho 100 manga, Saitama appears in Chapter 80.5 during a dream sequence. He also shows up as Arataka Regen's cell phone background in Chapter 9.5. Number 31. In One Punch Man Chapter 200, Saitama wears a shirt that reads Mob Psycho 1 Million. In Chapter 12, you can see a Mob Psycho 100 manga on the ground by the futon. Number 32. In the American dub, Saitama is voiced by Max Middleman. Middleman is a frequent voice actor with work in Transformers Rescue Bots and Fallout 4, though he has also appeared on Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory. Number 33. In the Japanese dub, Saitama is voiced by Makoto Furukawa, best known for his work on Golden Time and the recently aired Orange. Number 34. Furukawa didn't know how to connect with Saitama during the audition, so rather than prepare, he just did what came naturally to him, being himself. Number 35. When voicing Saitama, Furukawa had to modulate his voice depending on the hero's face. His strong voice was reserved for Saitama's serious side, and the director would prevent him from using it when Saitama was sporting his goofier face. Number 36. One thing that Furukawa and Saitama do connect on is their perspectives on their jobs. Furukawa views them both as a little awkward, but that they give their all on the things they're able to do and work towards their ideals. Number 37. Here's a trend you'll begin to notice. Murata felt a lot of pressure when he first began drawing Saitama because he was worried that he wasn't capturing the character, and he's not the only one. More on that later. Number 38. In the American dub, Genos is voiced by Zach Aguilar, who is fairly new to the voice acting world. Aside from One Punch Man, you may recognize him as Arthur Pendragon from The Seven Deadly Sins and Slain Troyard from Ald Noah Zero. Number 39. Contrary to their One Punch Man roles, Max Middleman and Zach Aguilar were actually enemies once, as Inaho Kaizuka and Slain Troyard in Ald Noah Zero. Number 40. In the Japanese dub, Genos is voiced by Kaito Ishikawa. He was also in A Lull in the Sea and was Seiya in Saint Seiya Legend of Sanctuary. Number 41. Ishikawa and Furukawa had previously appeared together in Golden Time, where they played college buddies. Considering Genos and Saitama share a place, they haven't ventured very far off from that. Number 42. Ishikawa actually auditioned for both Saitama and Genos. He found Genos to be a much more defined character though, and favored that audition, which obviously is why he's playing Genos and not Saitama. Number 43. Ishikawa actually had trouble coming up with a voice for Genos. He wanted it to be compatible with Saitama's voice, but Saitama hadn't been cast yet, and Ishikawa had no idea what the character would sound like. Once Furukawa was hired, he was finally able to envision his own character's voice. Number 44. One of the challenges of playing Genos is that his emotions really vary on a case-by-case -case basis. Rather than having designated reactions to Gerald types of situations, as is the norm, Ishikawa had to figure out Genos' behavior based on each individual scene. Number 45. Ishikawa's favorite character is Moomin Rider, because he reminds him of Captain America, another hero he's a big fan of. Number 46. One designed characters like Genos and Sonic to look much cooler than Saitama, in order to put a gap between them. This gap was multiplied when the comics were adapted into the professionally drawn manga series. Number 47. According to the voice actors, Genos and Saitama's relationship is that of a comedic duo. However, they switch off who's the straight man and who's the funny man. Number 48. According to one, the big backpack that Genos uses to move in with Saitama is filled with spare parts. Well, I guess he's better off having them on hand. Number 49. Japanese voice of Sonic is Yuki Kaji. Kaji also voiced Eren Jaeger in Attack on Titan, and Katsuhira Agata in Kiznaiver. Number 50. According to one, if Sonic had a weapon, he would have been able to defeat the Sea King, if only. Number 51. There's a running gag in the manga that Sonic's always humiliated by Saitama during the battles. He's gotten hit in the crotch, has had his ultimate technique interrupted, and he's gotten his head knocked into the pavement. Number 52. According to one, Genos and Sonic are equally matched in power, so the fight between them would end in a tie. Number 53. The black lines under Sonic's eye are an homage to Gao from Ice Shield 21. Number 54. Marive Harrington plays the Tornado of Terror in the US dub. She's also had roles in Dog with the Blog, Good Luck Charlie, the Alpha and Omega series, and even How I Met Your Mother. Number 55. Tornado of Terror's Japanese voice is Aoi Yuki. She has a ton of recurring anime credits and has even provided her voice for Pokemon and as Sticks the Badger in the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Number 56. Apparently, Tatsumaki is a big fan of candy apples. Good thing Halloween is around the corner. Number 57. Tatsumaki makes a cameo in one's other manga, Mob Psycho 100, during an explanation of Esper's. Number 58. In the American dub, Blizzard of Hell is voiced by Lauren Post. She's also appeared as Lauren Victoriano in The Evil Within, as Valentine and Ilium in Skullgirls, and she's even been in Dragon Ball Z Abridged. Number 59. Blizzard of Hell's Japanese voice is Saori Hayami. Hayami has also given her voice to The Irregular at Magic High, Short Piece, and Boruto Naruto the Movie. Number 60. Despite having just a few appearances in the manga, Blizzard of Hell is very popular among fans. She ranked second in an official character poll 
role behind Saitama himself. Number 61. In the American dub, Moomin Rider is voiced by Robbie Damon. He's done a lot of work in anime as well as in some Marvel and Star Wars properties, including Bucky Barnes in the Avengers Assemble TV series. This is particularly funny because... Number 62. In the Japanese dub, Moomin Rider is voiced by Yuichi Nakamura. Outside of his roles in an array of anime titles, including Oreimo and Clanad, he also dubs the voice of Captain America in all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. So, Moomin Rider's got this whole superhero thing down. Number 63. Moomin Rider's name directly translates to Licenseless Rider. His wardrobe and name are both parodies of the Kamen Riders, essentially Japanese Power Rangers. Number 64. Zombie Man needs 15 minutes to heal himself, unless he's diced up completely, because then he dies. According to one, Zombie Man is the weakest of the S-Class heroes because he's all defense and nearly no offense. Number 65. Zombie Man is voiced by Takahiro Sakurai in the Japanese dub. Sakurai also played Cloud in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. In the American dub, Zombie Man is voiced by Vernon Dew, who was in Cornhole the movie. Maybe not as cool as being Cloud. Number 66. King is voiced by Rich Brown in the American dub and Hiroki Yasumoto in the Japanese dub. The latter has appeared in Bleach as Asado Chad Yasutora. Number 67. In both the anime and manga, King makes a cameo before he's formally introduced. In the manga, it's in chapter 13 before his debut in chapter 29. In the show, he pops up in episodes 1 and 4 before his debut in episode 10. Number 68. It was rumored that King's scar was obtained in a fight to the death with a god level monster. However, it was later revealed that he got it from a monster called Octopus Claw Man, who was only tiger level. Number 69. Boros is actually an allusion to one's previous project, Tayo Man. In that story, the final boss was too strong for the plot to progress, and it took 20 years in real time before one came up with an opponent strong enough to fight him. Number 70. Boros was redesigned by Murata in order to look more alien. One got Boros's name from a game that he once played. Number 71. Vaccine Man is a clear parody of the Anpan Man character, Baikin Man. They even got Ryusei Nakao, who voices Baikin Man, to voice Vaccine Man. And in the American dub, they cast Christopher Sabin, aka Piccolo in Vegeta. Number 72. Crabalante's name is inspired by the Godzilla villain, Biolante. One loved Biolante, so he started adding Lante as a suffix to monster names as an homage. Number 73. The origin of the ground dragon's name is a tad more subtle. It's the literal translation of the kanji Tsuji no Ryu, which just means mole. Number 74. According to Murata, Atomic Samurai is based on Kyuzo from Seven Samurai. Number 75. One's favorite characters, besides Saitama of course, are King and Deep Sea King. Number 76. In 2015, the manga was greenlit for an anime adaptation. Murata was so excited that he could barely restrain himself as he wanted to announce the news on Twitter right away. But, you know, legality. Number 77. The animation studio Madhouse is behind the creation of the show. They have a slew of titles under their belt, such as Death Note, Hunter x Hunter, a bunch of films by Satoshi Kon, Parasite, and so much more. <laughs> Number 78. Because the anime animator community is small, much of the staff involved with the show had previously worked together, notably on the show Space Dandy. Number 79. The One Punch Man anime is directed by Shingo Natsume, who also worked on Space Dandy and Full Metal Alchemist The Sacred Star of Milos. Natsume thought that Saitama was deceivingly difficult to draw. Because his design is so simple, it was very obvious that there was a mistake in the drawing. Number 80. The character designs for the anime were done by Chikashi Kubota, who also worked on From the New World and Robotics Notes. Number 81. When Kubota first read the One Punch Man manga, he was blown away by the quality of the art and was worried that they wouldn't be able to do it justice in the animated version. I think they knocked it out of the park, don't you? Number 82. For those animation buffs, the name Yoshimichi Kameda might sound a little familiar. His previous credits include working as the main animator on the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood series, where he was in charge of memorable action sequences, including the battle between Roy Mustang and Lust, as well as King Bradley vs. Greeling. Number 83. Tomohiro Suzuki is in charge of the scripts for the show. He's previously worked on Tiger and Bunny and Saint Seiya Legend of Sanctuary. Number 84. One was honored to be allowed to join in the production meetings of the show. He had never been involved in the creation of an anime and worried he'd get in the way. One sitting in on the production meeting actually ended up helping the team a lot since he was right there to answer questions. They also warmed up the meeting by thinking of new monster names. Number 85. The anime staff filled the studio with reference books and figures in order to help their animations. However, it meant that people coming into the studio saw a lot of barely clothed, flexing men, which may have given them the wrong impression of what kind of show this is. Number 86. During the production of the show, Murata served as a teacher to the design team. No, literally a teacher. He even gave out grades based on the work they did. The show's director was worried he received bad marks, but thankfully did not. Murata is strict, but fair. Number 87. The series actually got greenlit thanks to the US. While Shingo Natsume was in the States for a panel, he noticed that American anime fans tend to watch in big groups rather than alone in their homes, as is the case in Japan. This made the team more confident that the show would have a Western audience. Number 88. It's time for a What's the Difference speed round. Today's topic, the anime and the manga. First off, the super custom Y0649Z Mark II that is in the first episode is not in the manga. There are also no giant subterraneans in the manga. Number 89. The anime did not show the dismembered bodies of all Genesis clones 
in the lab in episode 3. Number 90. In episode 4, in Saitama lists the monsters he has defeated, some of them are cameos from bonus chapters, including 170,000 year old Kikata Nymph, personification of a light pole cord, and Octopus Clawman. Number 91. There's a lot more web surfing in the show than the manga, like Saitama and Genos going to the Hero Association website. In the manga, people mainly just tell each other these things. Number 92. The shot put, whack-a-mole, and the punching machine hero tests are only performed in the anime, not in the manga. Number 93. In the anime, Iaian is freaking out about whether or not Melzagald could be killed. In the manga, he's pretty calm about it, which makes his sudden arm loss much more shocking in the manga. Number 94. In the manga, Melzagald had been growing his dead head for 10 years. In the anime, he'd be growing it for 100 years. Wow, a 90 year difference. Number 95. Pluton and the whole scene with him attacking Y City was completely unique to the show. None of this was in the manga. Okay, end of speed round. Number 96. In episode 7, there's a cameo by Tamiya Ryoko and Shinichi from Parasite. I think Madhouse is getting their strings crossed just a bit. Number 97. That kick-ass Obedi theme song is called The Hero Set Fire to the Furious Fist by Jam Project, short for Japan Animation Song Makers. One of his founding members is Hironobu Kageyama, who also did Dragon Ball Z's opening theme. No, not Rock the Dragon. Chara head chara. Jam Project has worked on music for a ton of other anime, but they may be best known for their work on the Super Robot Wars video game series. Number 98. The show director wanted the intro visuals to reflect the kick-ass rocking opening. The animation team went full rock as well and made an opening filled with energy. They incorporated BL shading, which fills shadows with black ink, making it look like an American superhero comic. Natsume hopes that the opening is received as a cool superhero opening. Number 99. Saitama pays homage to Hunter x Hunter in the intro sequence. Near the end of the opening, he strikes the same pose as Gone Freaks when he performs his signature attack, Rock. Number 100. The closing theme is called I'll Find It Before the Stars for You by Hiroko Moriguchi. Moriguchi has also performed themes from Mobile Suit Gundam. Number 101. The first season of the One Punch Man anime covers up to chapter 36 in the manga, for those of you that are wondering. Number 102. After much viewer demand, the anime began to air in America on Adult Swim in July of 2016 as part of the network's Toonami lineup. Number 103. The series has a wide international fan base. It's so big that one even gets tweets in English that he tries his best to accurately respond to. Number 104. In 2015, the series was nominated for an Eisner Award. It was also nominated for the Manga Taisho Awards in 2014. Number 105. The first and second volumes of One Punch Man hit first and second place on the New York Times manga bestsellers and stayed there for two weeks. Number 106. Early positive reception from the audience gave the staff hope for the future of the show. However, the praise they most valued was from one. Because if the original creator likes your work, then you know you're doing something right. Number 107. Season 2 of One Punch Man has been confirmed! Rumor has it that Season 2 of One Punch Man might even deviate from the manga, setting Saitama against new and powerful foes, maybe even ones that can't be one-punched. Hmm. There you have it. 107 facts about One Punch Man. Anything we missed? Anything from the manga you wish was in the anime? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to see more fact videos on your favorite cartoons and anime. And remember, Federator loves you.